Brand new CNB, I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, thanks for joining us. It is a brand new initiative from Kia for the first time in India and only for the second time anywhere in the world. Beat 360 is essentially a brand experience center. So you can't come in here and buy cars, but you can experience everything about the brand. And it's a nice new initiative, something that we'll show you glimpses of right through today's episode. But first, I know many of you are very keen to see that promised review of the Maruti Suzuki Espresso, so I won't keep you from it. King Shuk and I spent a lot of time driving the car, testing it thoroughly, all the details you need to know. So when I first saw this car, I couldn't help but start to sort of think of a weird little story in my mind. It's a story I'm going to share with you. Think about it. Three friends, you know, really close friends, they did everything together and by that I mean everything. So the outcome of this very interesting three-way relationship was uh, a brand new child. And uh, who are the three friends? Well, the Vitara Brezza from Maruti Suzuki, the uh, Quid from uh, Renault, and uh, the KUV100 from Mahindra. So the thing is, we don't really know who the father is. Yes, that is just a joke and so not meant in an offensive way. But the brand new Maruti Suzuki Espresso does look a little bit like those three cars, doesn't it? And the theme that ties those three together is SUV. And the Espresso is what Team Maruti calls a mini SUV, so we will humor them and do the same. It is essentially an entry hatch that will compete with the Renault Quid the car that brought space, sexiness and SUV flair to the entry car segment in the first place. So it's not a huge surprise that it looks that way. Alright, so you got a little bit of an intro on the car. We've got it here with us. Kingshuk, this is the manual? Yes, this is the manual. We're going to start with the manual and get straight to it. How does it drive? Let's go. To be fair, let's go was the tagline for the Alto, the car that the Espresso hopes to supplement at the entry volume side of things. The new Espresso essentially occupies the kind of positioning the previous Wagon R used to. Tall, narrow, compact and priced attractively. At between 3,69,000 and 4,91,000 rupees, the car is great value. Or is it? Well, that's what we aim to find out. It looks kind of narrow from the back, especially out on the road, and that is because it is. Remember, the parallel I drew with the earlier generation Wagonard? Well, that buyer was not necessarily happy with the bigger Wagonard, and so may love this. The front and flanks, though, do have some road presence, but only by comparison to the rear. The big takeaway, I think the car really kind of redeems itself. You go into it based on how it looks and you know the whole proposition, what you understand about this end of the market thinking, this isn't going to be a great experience. And yeah, the car actually surprises you because there's a few things that stand out as key USPs. The very first thing and the thing you'll notice right away is the right quality. It's actually pretty supple, despite the fact that it sits on thin tires and uh, you know, yes, on a high speed situation you'll find that there's a lot of body roll but uh, otherwise just in terms of ride quality itself as also the uh, seating position you'll feel that it's really really satisfying it also drives home that SUV characteristic quite ably So 
also ride quality is good. The steering, that's the other thing that will surprise you. Going how entry level Marutis have always been, I expected a sort of a wobbly soft steering. Not quite so, it's, uh, I won't say it's very stiff, but yes, it certainly is a lot more satisfying in terms of both its response and how it performs uh, out on the open road. It's uh, the angle of the steering though that bothers me because it's fixed at this angle. It's a little small to this steering and so it takes some getting used to. Now in city driving for the most part you won't find it uncomfortable but on long distance drives you're going to find this angle really weird because it'll start to tire your arms out because it's kind of, kind of dropped forward a little bit. And of course you can't adjust it so that's a bit of a downer for me. The K10B engine is familiar and does the job well then on this car. Consider that the car only weighs 726 kgs and you can understand why. Now it's built on a new platform that is definitely superior to the previous Wagonar or Alto family though. Let me explain why. The car does live up to its typical expectation of a Maruti Suzuki being light, zippy, quick and fairly responsive. The thing is that the car will also maintain its composure as it gets up to triple digit speeds. So uh, that's the good thing about borrowing from the new Hartec K platform from Japan. And so it stays pretty stable. It's uh, got a decent amount of chassis integrity. Though, yeah, like I said before, the body roll is immense. The gearbox is very forgiving though and you won't see too much frequent gear changing required in city traffic. Out on the highway, like I said, the engine does the job. It's a bit noisy though and so sound damping could have been a lot better, especially from the engine bay because in terms of wind noise or even road noise, the car does pretty well. But it is that engine noise that will start to really grate on your nerves. So that's another big negative, unfortunately. Yet the overall drive experience is, wait for it, more refined than you'd expect when you see the car for the first time. I would recommend this as a pure city car still and not really a highway cruiser. Now the AMT version. Siddharth drove the manual and I'm now driving the AMT version of the Espresso. Engine of course stays the same, 67 brake horsepower, 90 newton meters of peak torque and instead of the 5 speed manual gearbox, this one gets an AMT or AGS as Maruti likes to call it. We have been driving in and around Jodhpur and so far the AMT hasn't quite given us any reason to complain, be it in the city or on the highway. Only problem is when you're driving on the highway and you want to overtake slow moving vehicles, just trucks, buses, cattle. Apart from that, we quite like the braking performance of the car. There is decent bite and progression, and if you want to shed speed very quickly, the car maintains its stability, it maintains its composure, and it will not give you a scary moment. The Espresso meets basic front crash norms certified at 56 km per hour and has ABS and a driver side airbag as standard. Each variant has an O or option which gives you dual airbags and seat belts with pretensioners. Now those seat belts with pretensioners and dual airbags should be standard in my view. Well, everything is standard on the VXI Plus, of course. Car design of the year. And the winner is not the Maruti Suzuki Espresso. It's built to a cost, this car, and unfortunately, that shows. It shows up right away, just in terms of the sort of crudeness of design. It looks unfinished. It doesn't look like something from 2019. And to me, that is its biggest weakness. Now. Take a look at some of these elements. Huge wheel well, exaggerated height, 
So there's a lot of gap here between the wheel and uh, the car's body. And then if you look at the wheel well itself, it's all naked in there. There's absolutely no cladding. Again, shows up the cost cutting element on this car for sure. It's given that squarish element because of trying to look like an SUV, because it's a mini SUV. And yet, it makes the wheel actually look smaller than it is. And it is a small wheel to begin with. 13 inch wheel on the regular car, 14 on the VXI Plus. Lots of metal over here and uh, you know, I have to say in the red, the car actually looks a little bit nicer because some of these lines do show up a little nicer. In uh, some of the other colors, it all just looks flat. So nothing to break all this expanse of metal. And again, that's been done for the SUV element. It does imply a lot of sense of space, this design does. And that I have to say is a good thing perhaps for a lot of people. You know, nice big greenhouse, lots of light, very airy sort of a look for the cabin, but just really plain and boring design otherwise. Even in the front, yes, there's a little bit of drama that you get from the grill and you know the headlamp cluster, but really not much. Lots of big metal here too, because remember this DRL is not standard. It's uh, an accessory aftermarket that you can get at the dealer costs 10,000 rupees. So how many people will really get it? Not so sure. But the only good thing is that even the guy buying the base variant can get that. Now, the bumper, yes, it's two-tone and thank God for that because at least that does break some of that metal monotony. It does have an element coming up here, which again gives that SUV look. There's a skid plate down there that you can get, which is uh, again optional. Accessorization will be key on this car because we've seen with the Renault Quid, the car that this is really going after, Lots of people like to accessorize and customize their cars. A big percentage of those buyers have shown that. And so, uh, of course, Maruti would want to go for something like that here. Even this chrome element that you see in the grill, not standard. That is part of the accessory kit as well. In fact, you've got two different packs that are available and uh, energetic and expedition. And on those, you get certain elements around the car. You get a little bit of a colorful border for this. You've got, uh, of course, a uh, big strip that again helps break some of this monotony that I've been talking about. So yes, some of those things will probably get popular, but uh, you know what? None of it may really matter because they're probably going to sell a ton of these anyway. It doesn't matter what I think about how it looks because a lot of the buyers, think about it, for them from an Alto K10 or even an Alto 800, this is a huge step up figuratively and literally. So it's not pretty, but those looks begin to grow on you. As I've been saying, the car looks especially narrow and plain from the rear. And a chunkier, wider bumper would have helped save that Bajaj cute-like rear end. Still, it gives you a surprising amount of boot space. There is no variant badging for trim or even the AMT. So after seeing the outside, you may not have huge expectations of the uh, cabin itself, but I have to say that at least in terms of design imagination, you see something which you've never seen from Maruti before. A very different layout for the dash. Really nice elements in terms of some of the shapes. I mean, look at the way the AC vents are mounted up here. It's not always comfortable in terms of, you know, the blast of air coming at your face, but I have to say the AC itself is very effective in its cooling. The round element, which is like minis, uh, of course, Maruti likes to say it's inspired by premium watches. Go figure. But it's still different. It's nice. It's not badly finished. It's not too plasticky, though. Some of these elements, like the storage space here, could have had a soft plastic so that if you do keep keys or phones or uh, coins over here, they don't bounce around too much. So it's a very strange thing. Inside here, you see these uh, sort of dead patterns in the black. And there's no real reason for this shape otherwise. I suspect the export model or perhaps a future variant will have an LED, perhaps tachometer and fuel gauge in there. That's possibly the only reason why it's been designed this way. You've got obvious cost saving though that uh, despite this imaginative design shows up straight away. The fact that the instrument cluster is right here in the middle and not in front of you, it does not really take away too much attention because the car is so tiny that you're not really sort of bothered by that too much. But obvious cost savings so that left hand drive right hand drive because remember Maruti has said it will export this car to many markets shouldn't be a problem in terms of cost the power windows are in here as well just for the front two doors and not on the door itself again very obvious cost saving and no power windows even as an option on the top end version which is a bit surprising but uh, 
yes, this is a car that's designed to a certain cost. Lastly, this particular one, of course, is the AMT. You've got uh, the USB point here for the Smart Play Studio input, as well as your phone charging. And you've got a 12 volt uh, charger there, just below the AC controls. Steering mounted controls, always a good thing. And in this segment in particular, people do appreciate it. Comfortable seats, very surprisingly comfortable seats. I have to say nice, tall, upright stance, easy to get in and out of. The same is true at the back. Take a look at the rear space now. The rear is great on space. Headroom and legroom are good for this segment. The seat itself isn't as plump or contoured as I would have liked. And the inbuilt headrests are a bit too low. But most people will love this and it will remind them of that old wagon R. So, one of the party pieces inside the cabin of the new Espresso is this. The Maruti Suzuki Smart Play Infotainment System. It's a 7 inch touchscreen and of course it gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So your smartphone connectivity is sorted. Now, the Maruti Suzuki Smart Play Infotainment System, it's offered only on the VXI Plus model. That's it. The VXI models, they get the Smart Play dock and the standard and the LXI model, they don't get any infotainment system, anything of that sort. But the good news there is the fact that Maruti Suzuki is offering a bunch of accessories. So, even if you're buying the base variant of the Espresso, you can always ask Maruti to fit in an infotainment system and Maruti also offers a wide range of those so you have the option of fitting in a rear seat entertainment system as well at the price of 11,000 rupees going up all the way to 26,250 rupees for the top of the line pioneer infotainment system which you can fit here so even if you have the base model you can always accessorize it With Renault having just brought us the facelift on its 800cc and 1 litre quid, the battle here will be an interesting one. As I said before, despite what any of us think, the espresso will likely sell like hotcakes. It's a definite upgrade to the buyer who's used to an Alto or an Eco or even the old Wagoners standard. The chassis, suspension, ground clearance, drive performance, mileage and excellent air conditioning are its strong qualities. Now if only it had also gone bigger on safety and on styling and was just a tad wider. If only. The last thing we want to say is that despite the car's name, there is absolutely nothing connecting it with a nice strong shot of coffee. And there's not even a brown paint shade to bring that element in.